Bhagavad Gita is heart of Hinduism. If you see, the speaker of Bhagavad Gita is Lord Krishna himself. And Krishna gives the instructions not only for any particular person or any particular sect. His instructions are universal and these are applicable to anyone, whether it's a male or a female or a beggar on the street or a king. So it's applicable for all. And if you see that Lord Krishna gives solutions to the various problems. So it's a manual for, you know, all kinds of problems. So for example, if you see Kimanya Shastra Vistara. So what is the use of so many books? Okay. So if you can recollect, you know, Lord Shiva tells in uh, Gita Mahatya, Gita Sugita Kritavya means what is the use of other books when there is one book that is enough. So this book talks about solutions of various problems. So Bhagavad Gita is nothing but it's a summary of all the knowledge available. All the libraries if you make into one book that is Bhagavad Gita. That is why it is called Rajavidya, king of knowledge. Our human brain has a capacity of five Wikipedias. Right? And Bhagavad Gita is condensed of all millions of Wikipedias. Okay? So, Google's, millions of Googles also if you combine, that is the essence of the knowledge which you get in Bhagavad Gita. And the knowledge is non-sectarian. It is not for any particular religion or particular caste. No. It is a non-religious book. And nowhere in Gita you will find the words Hindu, Muslim, Sikh or anything. So you see that the whole output of Bhagavad Gita is totally non-sectarian. It can be taken by anyone. It's for the humanity. And it calls for universal brotherhood. Panditaha samadharshana. You should see everyone equal. A dog eater and a carpenter or a beggar on the street. You should see everyone equal. That is the real universal brotherhood. That is a universality which calls in the Bhagavad Gita. And if you see that, nastho vidyate abhavo, nabhavo vidyate asata. No stability in this unreal world. Okay? This is fluctuating. So my dear friends, when there is fluctuation, so one should be very sober. You should not be distracted. So that's a, you know, one of the shloka in Krishna tells. Okay? And he tells, this is all temporary. So everything comes and goes. So nothing is ours. So why take pride? Why there is so much of ego? So when we are here, it clearly tells that, you know, we should not leave with that our balloons, which we create ourselves. Right? And if you see, the Bhagavad Gita gives to all kinds of people what solutions they want. For example, somebody wants to gain knowledge. So the shloka which recites or which quotes is Tadvidi Pranipatena Pariprashnena Sevaya. Go to a person, knowledgeable person, a guru, and surrender unto him, seek knowledge with him, and try to realize the goal of whatever you want to achieve. So this is how, you know, one of the tenets of Bhagavad Gita talks about if you are interested in gaining knowledge. And this is a way of gaining knowledge. Go and surrender and serve to the person who has you know, know the absolute truth, who has seen the truth and try to surrender him and 
serve him in that way you will receive the knowledge okay and if you see one who has failed in exam what kind of solution you will get in bhagavad gita yes krishna tells sukha dukha sama kristva that means if you have if you have failed or whether you passed okay consider everything as same these are all dualities in this material nature but when you transcend these dualities there is no failure there is no success so this is all here in this material framework success and failure so my dear friends so this is how we should consider our uh, ourselves you know non dualistic approach to success and failure and if you see somebody you know a lot of people we see that youngsters these days are succumb to a depression or all kinds of pressures and you have seen that you know uh, there is increase of 80% uh, depression amongst youth in the last uh, corona you know period so here uh, krishna again addresses that there is a failure you know and uh, there is uh, once we fail or when we are nearing the failure we go into depression right and here abhyasena kunteya anything you can achieve in this world provided you do abhyasa abhyasa means practice there is a saying in the word, english practice makes man perfect so nothing can stop any person achieving anything in this world if he chooses to practice so this is one of the beautiful sentence the youth of india should know that we can achieve anything anything you want to achieve in this world it's all because of abhyasa konteya he tells in the eighth chapter okay similarly yukta chetasya karma right it okay he says you should have yukta towards life yukta means regulated so unrestricted enjoyment since enjoyment is the fall down of the soul people want to enjoy unlimited but they know that this unlimited enjoyment tendency leads them to fall down here in this world you cannot eat more than 10 gulab jamuns if you eat more than that you'll be hospitalized okay here it's very interesting if you eat more you become diabetic if you don't eat you'll become you get uh, tuberculosis so you should adopt this middle path okay it's called yukta chetasya karma that is middle path neither extreme so everything has to be regulated whether it is eating whether it is sleeping also one should not sleep excess right so average sleep is around 6 to 8 hours is good and if you sleep beyond 6 hours or 8 hours it's a symptom of depression so we see krishna has given all the instructions very clearly and bhagavad gita is called a love letter for the humanity actually bhagavad gita itself translates as song of god or song of god of love for his devotees so this is how it is and one who wants to live peacefully suppose i want to live peacefully in this world there is so many distractions and the biggest distraction for today's world or today's scenario is gadgets internet social media this is the biggest distraction one of the survey says that average person spends around 2.5 hours spending on these gadgets and believe me this is non productive one of the topper of civil service 2018 he said i give my credit to youtube is a topper so my dear friends we can use this distraction which is number one distraction for most of us that is social media internet right so it's uh, everything is us everything is there in our hands okay so we should if you want to be peaceful all right kama krodha tatha loba so you should subdue this kama is lust krodha is anger okay and loba is 
you know desire or you know greed so these three things are gateway to hell lord krishna tells in bhagavad gita so we should be very careful when it comes to kama krodha and loba this are the gateways to hell one should not have too much of lusty desire we see that so much lust is there in this world one of the survey says that internet 73% is used for pornography my goodness so we see so much lust is there in this world why we should have a lust right so we should have a regulative approach yes marry and have you know uh, legalized way of life so kama krodha anger yes anger is the root cause for all the diseases it spoils your whole internal system loba greed so in mahabharata it is said mother earth can serve any needy but it cannot serve one greedy i repeat mother earth can serve any needy you want two times food yes three times food yes but one person who is greedy it cannot serve so you have to take care of this greediness this is the peace formula lord krishna also tells in bhagavad gita bhukta ram yagya saptavasya sarva loka maheshwara he says you know whatever yagnas you do is do is an offering to me because he is the bhukta he is the enjoyer and we want to be enjoyer okay so that is where again the problem comes we cannot live peacefully so peace formula is also given by the lord in the bhagavad gita very simple he gives all very simple instructions right only thing is that you have to meditate on them and apply so this is how you know uh, bhagavad gita gives us solutions to our material problems and one who wants to progress spiritually somebody wants to grow right so then there is a solution for that machitta madgata prana bodayanta parasparam so here we talk you know good topics topics like yoga meditation right you talk good things there is so much good thing in this world okay why always think of bad things in a day we get around 80000 thoughts and out of the 80000 thoughts 95% are negative thoughts and meditation is the only anecdote meditation is the only anecdote and this is what again lot tells you know so talk on this beautiful topics which will grow you which will not degrade you and talk about good things talk about the holy things holy subjects which will lift you okay so this is one area again where the lord tells in bhagavad gita right so if you want to grow spiritually spirituality is growing in all directions so along with people neglect this spirituality right so there are you know four aspects one is emotional social and physical and spiritual but these three things are can be covered but people neglect spirituality spirituality is nothing but any matter or any subject concerned with the soul generally if you see in this body there are three aspects as per bhagavad gita one is mind body and soul mindset heart set and soul set so we have to feed everything equally if you don't feed anything then there's a problem we see that you know 99.99% they all focus on below the neck they want to eat nice food they want to wear nice clothes they want to wear latest garments they want to have the best of the watches everything is you see it is below the neck so geeta advises us you take care of three things mind body and soul but what happens when you take care of these things this is taking care of the body who will take care of the soul who will take care of the mind and mind is the best friend and is also the worst enemy according to bhagavad gita 
So mind control is very important. How do you control the mind? Again by meditation. So you see, anything concerned with the mind, the antidote is meditation. So you see the beauty of Bhagavad Gita, it talks so many aspects. And I say always say that you know anything related to mind can be done through meditation and practice of meditation. That's how the solution we get for these mind problems. And most of our diseases are due to mind related. 90% one of the survey in late 90s it was found in America that most of the diseases are mind related diseases. So if you can control or if you can know how to subdue this mind agitation then you will find solution. Similarly, somebody wants perfection in this world and when he leaves this world also he, he feels you know he should be perfect. The Lord tells in uh, one of the shloka, Manmana bhava mad bhakto madhya jima namaskaru. Okay? He says, if you want higher purpose or you want to perfect in this life and next life also, so manmana bhava, think of me, meditate on me, do meditation, right? Then this is how you become, you know, uh, a person who can love, through meditation you can love, right? So this is very much uh, valid in Bhagavad Gita that machita madgata prana, right? So this is how it is, madbhava, mad, madbhava, madbhakto, that means think of me always, meditate on me, my forms, my instructions, right? So we see that Bhagavad Gita has, is very much relevant to us. There is a beautiful analogy of Bhagavad Gita, it talks, this body is like a charioter and the soul, the Atman is the passenger and the driver is intelligence, the intellect and the reins are mind and the horses are senses, the five senses, eyes, ears, touch, smell. Right. These five senses are again our five horses. So this is a beautiful analogy where we can say that this mind has to be controlled by the reins of the charioter. Okay. And the charioter is this intelligence. Okay. And the passenger is the soul. And this you know, whole chariot is the body. And five senses are in this, you know, five horses. So my dear friends, it's up to you how you control the reins. Because if you are out of the control of the reins, it takes you to the hell. So these reins again you can control by proper practicing of meditation. And if you see, three paths are told and described in Bhagavad Gita. Choose whatever path you want. Because all the paths they can, you know, counted in this three or can be fitted in this three. One is karma yoga, that is action, path of doing. So karma yoga is action, anything you have to, because nothing can happen in this world without action. There is not, anything is not possible without inaction. So everything goes in action, that is called karma yoga. And next is the jnana yoga, path of knowing, yes. So jnana yoga is path of knowing, you should know. You should know all the technicalities of this mind. You should know the all what should be needed in the body, what you should give. You cannot eat more, you cannot eat less. Okay? Yukta harasya. You cannot eat more, yes. Okay. So everything is has regulated. Everything should be regulated. Right? So this is jnana yoga. Then last we have bhakti yoga, that is path of feeling. So you should feel. Bhakti is nothing but feeling. If you don't have feel, we call it sympathy or empathy, whatever it is. Unless until you feel for the other human beings. All right? That is the greatest welfare activity, feeling for others. So we see that bhakti is not just uh, some uh, secluded place. You close your eyes, 
or you know do something no bhakti is feeling for others feeling for ourselves and give solution what kind of solution would you like to give these are the three areas where gita you know uh, includes any other any subject you want can be put in this three that is karma jnana and bhakti simply so, what is this bhakti uh, what is the what is the benefit how it is uh, connected bhakti the bhagavad gita talks about uh, it, it's a beneficial for the humanity okay and scripture says that bhagavad gita is chintamani chintamani is wish fulfilling gem and it's also called kalpataru that means wish fulfilling tree and it's also called kamadenu wish fulfilling cow bhagavad gita also propounds yam yam vapi smaran bhava that is your thoughts leads to feelings feeling leads to action action leads to habits and habits leads to your destiny so take care of your thoughts that's very important so yam yam vapi smaran bhava smaran smaran means thinking so what do you think okay so you should have every day before sleeping you should have introspection how was your day what did you do wrong how many people were hurted with your actions okay as soon as you get up okay you should also do introspection you should meditate you should do journaling you should do lot of you know internal engineering or engine in inner engineering so early mornings you are supposed to you know brahma murta is uh, supposed to be very holy hour one and a half hour before the sunrise there's a most precious time that is the time for the sages that is a time for the meditators so one should wake up in this early morning and do all the practices of meditation okay of anything related to the soul and mind the body is taken care anyway okay so you take care of this morning 5 to 9 routine and 9 to 5 is taken care i repeat once again you take care of 5 to 9 and 9 to 5 is taken care so people don't know this they neglect this morning routine right that is where it's very important so my dear friends morning routine is very important for our overall development and upliftment and lastly i want to say that geeta is like a mobile phone okay i'll just give an analogy take geeta in your pocket wherever you go right and flip it whenever you want have a time like we how we flip mobile so similarly you know flip mobile where uh, flip bhagavad geeta whenever you have time and if you go out of the house suppose you forget your mobile you come and run again you know come running to the house and pick up the mobile similarly you should go and pick up bhagavad geeta and you have lot of messages in, in the form of text just flip it beautiful messages you can meditate okay you read 15 minutes and you can meditate 15 hours on each message of bhagavad geeta there's so much in depth so much you know uh, we have a message in that okay we see many people have extolled the message of bhagavad gita and they are all extremely happy and they become great leaders for example mahatma gandhi einstein arbindo carl jung emerson oppenheimer thero nehru pandit nehru sarvapalli radhakrishna emerson okay shankaracharya madhvacharya nimbalkaracharya ramanujacharya bhakti siddhant sadh thakur shila prabhupada okay bal gangadhar tilak swami vivekananda swami vivekananda tells bhagavad gita is a character building book right and we have uh, you know any basent any basent she came from london british she came from britain to as a uh, you know pastor as a you know preacher of christianity but when she read bhagavad gita she told wow what a book it is so she took up uh, you know bhagavad gita into her life 
and she formed a theological society also. So, we see that uh, great people like Sunita Williams, astronaut, our own Prime Minister Modi, all right, and we have Tulsi Gabbard from America, okay, and uh, we see that uh, Nelson Mandela, so many successful people, great people, they always meditated, they have taken this extra the message of Bhagavad Gita into their lives. And uh, Tulsi Gabbard, in one of her uh, statements, she was telling when she was, you know, part of war war zone in uh, Iraq, she used to read Bhagavad Gita in front of the bombs were you know, getting fired. So this is how the great people they extol the message and uh, they become, you know, happy. They become leaders. They become great people. And it's also uh, Bhagavad Gita shlokas are nothing but you know meditation, right? And similarly, we see that. Suppose without mobile we cannot leave for a minute also. Why don't we take Bhagavad Gita book and leave without we can, why don't we feel that you know without that we cannot leave? Right? So we should have that like for Bhagavad Gita and you know you should miss like a mobile phone. And wherever you travel, just take it. We don't uh, we like to take our mobile phones wherever you travel. Similarly, we should take Bhagavad Gita. And any emergency you have, just open the Bhagavad Gita and you get relevant shloka and try to understand and contemplate. Okay? It is more of contemplation. This is a book of contemplation. Read and contemplate. Meditate. Right? So, this is how uh, Bhagavad Gita is an analogy of for a pocket Bhagavad Gita as a mobile phone. Right? So, I lastly I want to say that Gita stands for get in to action. All our actions should be positive. And how can we have that positive actions? By meditation. Meditation is the only way of creating a positiveness. Our actions creates results. Results creates destiny. So, our actions should be guided properly with the meditation. Yes. Right? And finally, I want to say there is another definition of Gita which is my own definition. GITA stands for greatest information technology for all. So, use it, apply it and see the results, definitely you will be happy. Right? So, thank you very much.